Don, you are a quantum physicist, you deal with cosmology, and you have a whole other life as a believer. Do these two worlds in which you live come into conflict? They must to some degree. You must have some doubts at some point, driven by your science or by your thinking about uh, uh, the world from a scientific way of thinking, which may be philosophical but based on your science. Uh, what are some of the conflicts that you face as a, as a, a full-blown theist? Well, I... I you know, would like to understand as much of reality as possible. And there's many things that I don't. I mean, I don't fully understand the, the, the problem of evil, but I have, you know, a tentative answer that maybe God loves the elegance of, of the universe so much that I even wrote, I think, in an email to, to you and Thomas Nagel that maybe God loves elegant existence or glee. <laughs> and that might possibly ex explain why our universe has so much elegance, even though it, it does have a certain amount of suffering and evil in it. But there is an objection, which partly I thought of, and then the philosopher Thomas uh, Nagel, or Nagel, I forget how it's pronounced, uh, raised that, well, you know, doesn't, can't God choose what he finds vibe, or could, couldn't God choose what he, what he wants? And so this does raise a question is that if I think the world is the best possible, well, this is, of course, relevant to, uh, relative to the nature of God and so on, but how, why is it that there aren't so, why is it the case that God and all other conscious creatures are just supremely happy all the time? It at least seems logically possible that we could, everybody could be just supremely happy all of, all of the time, and maybe you wouldn't even need a universe or, or God to have an elegant universe. So there's, there's a bit of a question when, I, when I'm trying to explain the, the existence of, of God as making the universe the best possible. There is a point that I can't explain, which is why God has the nature he has. When you talk about God's nature, that brings up uh, some issues. You believe God is all good. That means there's a lot of things God can't do, and God has restrictions. So maybe right. God is not free, and God doesn't have freedom. Now, that seems to contradict the, the, uh, the independent sovereignty of God. Well, it is, in a sense, I think God is free to do what he wills, but there is the question of whether God's free to will what he wills. I mean, I think in one sense, he, 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 he does... He does will what's the best. But now I'm asking the question is what is... Then he's not free. Then he's constrained totally in some uh, uh, arbitrary calculus to determine what's best. And uh, God has no choice. And he has to do... Well, you could view it that way. But if you do, I think if you do what's the best, I mean, you could say... I mean, people have traditionally argued that if, so, that if a being is free... And if, if God knows everything and knows what's the best, he will do what's the best. So, I mean... You know, you might say, in that sense, he cho his choice to do the best, I mean, you could say, well, he couldn't have done otherwise because then he wouldn't have done... But then you just say he's not doing his choice. So, I mean, in some sense, you could say whatever his choice is, you, you could say, well, and in some sense, that was determined. I mean, it's, it's determined by God. So it's a little bit, I mean, as to whether God okay. you know, has this constraint or not. What but, in your scientific career has, has caused you <clears throat> to wonder, even for a few seconds, about does this affect my total belief in God. I suppose the fact that I do know a, a, quite a lot of intelligent people that don't believe in God. So I, I, you know, I do know that my arguments for the existence of God are, are certainly not proofs. They're, not, they're, they're making assumptions that maybe other people wouldn't have used. In fact, have you ever convinced one of your scientific friends who don't believe in God through your arguments that now do believe in God? I'm not sure. I, I mean, I have had I, I had had a couple of fellow students that that I helped lead to Christ, but I'm not, I think they probably believed in God, but just weren't really following. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not really sure that I have. <laughs> well, there's anybody that I've actually convinced. You know, I think it takes the work of the Holy Spirit in somebody's heart to to show them that. I mean, I, I I'd like to give reasons so that people can be comfortable with their faith, or or if people are searching, and if they just think it's nonsense to believe in God, I would like to show reasons that I think it's not nonsense. I can't prove that God exists. I don't believe that there's any proof that uses axioms that everybody you know, agrees with. But I, I do think it's a quite reasonable faith. I'm not 100% certain about it, but I'm pretty, near, you know, I'm, I've got a very high confidence that, 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 that God exists, and, and I'm putting my you know, putting my life on the line and trying to follow what, what Jesus says. Well, I fail and I sin and I, you know, I, I do things that are, that are wrong. I don't always do what I, what I believe is right. I believe I should do what, what helps other people the most, but a lot of times I'm selfish and do what benefits me more than, 
than others. Okay, I mean that, that that's quite normal. Uh, I'd be I'd be shocked if that were not the case. Uh, but uh, through your scientific career, there must have been moments when something you thought about or did through your science uh, caused you to just doubt for a little bit. Well, it's more. I mean, I've I certainly had doubts, and I, I I think the the afterlife awareness problem that I don't have time to recount right now was one that gave me some doubts, at least about some elements of Christian theology. I, I've more or less come to peace with that. I think if I come to more doubts, it's it's it may be over more issues that you know I wish there were more direct evidence about, for example, the resurrection. I mean, I think the evidence is quite high that the the, the disciples believed they had seen Jesus alive and. Most of them were put to death for their faith, for which this was central. So I, I think if they didn't really believe it, they wouldn't have persisted to the death in this. And it seems to be the most natural uh, explanation for this belief that, uh, that they actually saw Jesus resurrected is Jesus was resurrected. But of course, it is a very remarkable claim. And so, you know, I, I can sometimes have doubts is it, because this is something so extraordinary. Of course, it's, it's, it's it quite admitted to be extraordinary. It's, it's a central it's a central tenet of the Christian faith, and it's recognized to be a complete miracle by God. So I, I'm not expecting it to have a natural explanation, but it is so remarkable that you know sometimes I will have doubts about it. So I'll have doubts about it that, about things that maybe arise from 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 historical or or that sort of things or the problem of evil, and usually that's more than from things that come from from science. I think this afterlife awareness thing, which is really more from the philosophical thing of John yeah. Leslie and, and Brandon Carter than science. Yeah. Uh, but, but from your science, from your work in quantum physics, and the more you understand the universe, uh, you, you don't feel that th that's more than, uh, uh, the more you understand, the less you need God, because some people have said that. The more we can explain naturally, the less we need a supernatural explanation. Right, I, don't, I think God is the origin of the whole thing. That he's, It's not a God of the gaps that he just explains the things we don't understand. I think he explains the things we don't understand and the things we, we do understand. Well, let's see, was it Jacques Mounod that wrote Chance and Necessity? Yeah. And I just see it, that's just dividing the world into two parts. The chance is the part we don't understand and necessity is the part we think we understand. So it's, <laughs> it's nothing, you know, I mean, I can think that God created both. He created what we don't understand and what we do understand. 